So now we will look at a very popular uh, reinforcement learning algorithm, very similar to SARSA, right? And again, it's a it's a version of generalized policy iteration, uh, but I will motivate it slightly differently, right? And uh, we will uh, just 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 to have a difference in the flavor, right? Uh, so remember, uh, our samples are coming from. Uh, uh, this kind of trajectories, right? So you have ST, AT, RT plus one, ST plus one, so on and so forth, right? And uh, so the the Q learning update, right? Well, sometimes it's called the one-step Q learning. So we can also think of multi-step Q learning. We'll come to that, but just similar to uh, 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 CD zero, right? So the Q learning update is as follows. We are now um, using Q hat uh, to denote uh, the estimate of Q. So, so this is the same as using the Q earlier, right? So just uh, think of that as equivalent, right? So I'm looking at the QSTAT. So if you think of how SARSA looked like, right? The SARSA would have been the equivalent SARSA update would have been the following. This would have been the uh, uh, the SARSA update, right? Uh, and this will be equivalent to the TD zero, and then you behave epsilon TD Lee, and then you are all good, right? So that's 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 the uh, that's the SARSA algorithm. So the big difference you notice from SARSA to what is Q learning is the following. So in SARSA you used AT plus one, which is the actual action you took at time t plus one, right? Or in this case, actual action you will take at time t plus one. That is AT plus one. While in the case of SARS in Q learning you do not do that, you actually say max over all possible actions I can take in ST plus 1, right. Give me the Q value, that is the max over all possible actions I can take in ST plus 1. So why did we arrive at this, right. So you can remember that uh, uh, we have the uh, Bellman optimality equation, right. So what does the Bellman optimality equation say? It basically says Q star SA is equal to the expected value of uh, RT plus 1 plus gamma times max over all possible actions q star st plus 1 comma f m given that we started at uh, s in uh, time t and uh, took action a at time t right so that's basically the uh, the bellman optimality equation so now if i want to write this as an uh, you know averaging uh, thing right so remember that we looked at it already right so if i want to do this as an averaging thing uh, so basically i have my old estimate right uh, which in this case is uh, q hat st at plus alpha times my new sample, right? That is my new sample minus my old estimate, which is q hat st at, right? So that is basically how we are doing it. Remember, why is this a new sample? Because this is the quantity I am taking the expectation of. Right, we, are, we we looked at them. I mean, this is exactly how we looked at TD zero. Now I'm just doing this for the Bellman optimality equation. So TD zero we got by converting the Bellman equation, uh, the expectation in the Bellman equation into an average, and Q learning we get by converting the expectation in the Bellman optimality equation, right, to an average. Right? So that's that's basically uh, basically it. That's how that's how we get the Q learning rule, right? So if you think about it, this again is a temporal difference thing, right? So this, in some sense, is an estimate of what Q star is say uh, will be at time t plus one, right? After I have seen the transition to st plus one, right, and I have gotten the reward r t plus one, what will be my estimate of Q star s comma a versus what is my estimate of Q star s comma a at time t, right? So this is basically it. So this is the estimate at time t plus one. This is the estimate at time t, and that gives me the and that gives me the uh, 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 temporal difference zero, right? So this is Q learning. So as you notice, the difference between SARSA and Q learning is very minimal, right? In one case, I use AT plus one here, no max. In the other case, I use max, and uh, don't worry about what is the actual action that I performed in state ST plus one. Okay. So in fact, this difference is what gives rise to the name SARSA itself, right? So right now I use only state, action, reward and next state. I do not use the next action 
but in sarsa i use the state action reward next state next action so that gives me sarsa okay this uh, that's really how the name was derived i'm, I'm not I mean, you can't make this uh, um, anyway so looking at uh, uh, the uh, the uh, q learning uh, update right so q learning is sometimes called as an off policy td control algorithm to evaluate the uh, policy so what i am actually evaluating is the greedy policy in some sense right i am evaluating the greedy policy by looking at what is the max i am going to do going forward right uh, how i am going to behave going forward right so i am not looking at what is the actual action i take i am not looking at my behavior action i am looking at quote unquote the optimal way i can behave the greedy way i can behave so i while i am computing the value function for the greedy behavior i'm behaving according to some other epsilon greedy uh, 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 behavior in the world i need to have some exploratory behavior in the world right if i'm going to behave greedily in the world we know that we'll get stuck in local optima so we need to behave have in a exploratory fashion in the world i need to look at some exploration policy right but i don't look at the exploration policy when i do the updates i am looking at the greedy policy so as far as i have the up, uh, the evaluation is concerned it is look it is like i am evaluating the greedy policy with respect to the current value function while the behavior is some kind of an exploratory behavior in the world so since the way i am drawing samples is different from the actual policy for which i am evaluating right so so far we have been talking about all the cases we have talked about the, pol the the samples from the world comes according to the policy which you are evaluating now i am evaluating a greedy policy but i am drawing samples according to an exploratory policy therefore this is called off policy right so it's not on the policy but off the policy so it's called off policy learning so it's called off policy control right so the behavior policy in this case is some kind of an epsilon greedy or something while the estimation policy is the greedy policy okay so putting this together so we can write down the q learning algorithm this is fairly straightforward very similar to what we had earlier so i initialize the qsa arbitrarily then i i i start for each episode i start off in some state right and then i pick action a right somehow I, the policy is derived from the q function according to uh, some some mechanism right and then i take action a right observe the reward and the next state and immediately i can do go ahead and do the update because i'm using max over a prime and i don't have to worry about what is the action right so i don't have to pick an action so earlier we had an action selection part here that is gone right so i, I just do this and then i set the the, the new state to be the uh, current s prime and then keep repeating until i get to the terminal state right once i get there i can go back and repeat for how many ever episodes i want right so one thing i should note is that you can choose a from s yes, any way from you know you don't have to worry about it being epsilon greedy in fact you don't even have to worry about it coming from the q function even because i'm not worried about my behavior policy right i'm i'm actually estimating the value function corresponding to the greedy policy anyway right so the samples that i draw can actually come from even a uniformly random policy i could just be behaving you know, every state i can just pick actions at random uh, and it doesn't matter because it will still uh, 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 work because the estimation policy is is different Uh, from the behavior policy right so the estimation policy is going to be always greedy with respect to the value function so, so behavior policy can be anything right the behavior policy can be just just uniform random right or, or some kind of a very large epsilon exploration and all of all of that is fine uh, uh, but my q values will still converge to the optimal value function as long as i am exploring uh, uh, like glee right the greedy in the limit right uh, with infinite exploration that's what i i really need as long as i'm doing that i'll eventually be uh, uh, coming up with the optimal uh, policy okay uh, so is is a uniform random policy a good idea to follow when you are using q learning i said you can follow a uniform random policy right but is it a good idea to follow the uniform random policy so if you remember when we were talking about uh, um real time dynamic programming i was actually saying that uh, you know real time dynamic programming because you are selecting actions according to your current policy 
that allows you to focus the computation on the states that are relevant to the optimal policy right so you you you, you, are, you want to minimize the amount of effort you spend in states that are very far away from trajectories that you will follow if you are executing the optimal policy right because you, you don't really want to spend too much effort there so if you're using a uniform random policy it's possible that you might you know land up in parts of the state space which you would never visit or with this is very 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 low probability if you are behaving according to the optimal policy therefore even though it is not absolutely essential for you to you know follow the uh, epsilon greedy uh, policy with respect to the current q function uh, it's often a, a, a good idea to do that because you will you will be able to focus your computation on the relevant parts of the state space okay so let's say that you are behaving according to the epsilon greedy policy on the q learning that means that only for you know a small fraction epsilon fraction or even slightly smaller than epsilon fraction of the times you would be making a different update in sarsa than q learning right so whenever you take an exploratory action q learning will still be updating with the max action while sarsa will be updating with the exploratory action that's the only change you will have right so q learning will update with the greedy action always right and for an epsilon fraction of the times or you know epsilon minus epsilon by n fraction of the times sarsa will be updating with a different action so q learning and sarsa will differ only in a small fraction of the updates but it turns out that can actually result in 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 in, in different behaviors right so here is a case where i'm not actually you know decaying epsilon during learning right epsilon is kept fixed and then i'm trying to see what what is the policy that i will end up learning so this is an example is of a cliff world right so here is like a grid world like we saw earlier right this is a grid uh, except that uh, so you have your four actions uh, except that uh, every step gives you a minus 1 right every step you take gives you a minus 1 and there is something called the cliff right? that's why it's called the cliff walking task right so if you fall off the cliff that is basically if you move into the state mark the cliff right you will get a reward of minus 100 and you will get transported back to the start state right so basically you keep going like this like this like this and then you come here then you get a reward of minus 100 and then you go back here right so your idea is to get to the goal yeah, as quickly as possible okay the idea is to get to the goal as quickly as possible so if you use q learning so q learning as you know will will ignore all kinds of exploratory actions right let's say i keep an epsilon fixed at point 0.1 right uh, but q learning will ignore all exploratory action so occasionally i'll 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 I, I might make an exploratory action and fall off the cliff right i'll get a minus 100 but the point is when i actually update the you know the value function for the previous state i will not look at the action i actually performed i'll look at what is the best possible action right so i don't care i'm falling off the cliff when i'm updating i'll only look at no no the, in this in this episode i might have fallen off the cliff but the true best thing to do is to keep going right Right, or keep going east right so that's basically what the uh, updates will look like right therefore when my learning converges my optimal path will be this according to q learning so it will learn the true optimal path it will be like hugging the cliff and going over to the other side on the other hand sarsa will look at the small fraction of times you actually fall off the cliff right when you when you fall off the cliff it will use that minus 100 reward that you got uh, to update your value function right? it will use that minus 100 reward you got to update the value function so what will happen is it will avoid states that are close to the cliff because there's a chance that you will fall off right there's a good chance that you will fall off 10 percent chance you will fall off if you're walking close to the cliff so if you walk one step away still there is a chance that you will fall off if you walk three steps away still there is a chance you will fall off but that's the farthest you can go right so sarsa will go all the way up over and then come down right so it's like kind of a safe path to learn so sarsa will actually learn the safe path which is to walk farther away from the cliff and minimize the chance that you will fall off when you are making exploratory moves okay one way of thinking about it is q learning learns an optimal policy assuming that when you are finally using the policy you will be behaving in a greedy fashion with respect to the q function right so q learning learns a optimal policy assuming that when you are finally using the policy 
you will behave optimally with respect to the q function right or greedily with respect to the q function right on the other hand sarsa assumes that you are going to continue exploring right this epsilon greedy policy is how you are actually going to behave in the future and so it will incorporate that you know, loss due to the epsilon beha greedy behavior into the value function and it will learn a value function that is best i'm um, sorry it will learn a policy that is best with respect to the epsilon greedy execution of the policy okay. so which is the good one to learn sars or q learning well depends so if you are going to you know after you finish your learning at some point you will stop and turn off your exploration and then and then just execute the greedy policy then q learning will give you uh, you know a win in the long run on the other hand for the for multiple reasons you might want to keep your exploration going right because one thing is you you don't know if you have actually visited all the states in 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 the in the mdp when you are learning because you don't know that to begin with right? so, say you're playing one of those atari games you don't know if you have visited all the possible locations in that while you are learning because you're not really keeping track right so you might not want to turn off exploration completely or there might be small changes in the environment that are happening right very very small drifts i'm not talking about a highly non stationary environment which is very hard to learn but there might be some small drifts you know like like a slight wind or something like that that, uh, that increases the noise in your action so so in these kinds of drifts happen you would want to continue to adapt your uh, policy therefore typically you don't want to turn off your learning rate your alpha you don't want it to go to zero your epsilon you don't want to go to zero you want to keep it that way right in such a case maybe learning through sarsa is better because that allows you to incorporate the uh, cost of the exploration into the value function and therefore uh, you learn a more robust policy so having said that right uh, and you can see this in in, in this learning curves also as the episodes go by q learning is converging to something that has about a minus 50 reward because it keeps falling off uh, 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 quite often right the, even though the probability of that happening of the uh, the falling off the cliff action right it's very 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 small because that will get updated with your minus 100 right so the probability of you picking that will be your epsilon by 4 uh, right but still that's there therefore q learning has about a expected reward of about minus 50 uh, while uh, sarsa has an expected reward of minus 25 over the learning period right so that already shows up but having said this it turns out that with the modern uh, uh, you know trend with deep deep uh, uh, architectures and so on and so forth uh, it makes more and more sense to use uh, q learning which is an off policy update mechanism uh, because we want to do uh, a lot of the computation with neural networks in a batch mode and when we want to do this batch mode computation uh, it makes more sense to use uh, uh, off policy learning than on policy therefore Uh, more and more uh, often you will find q learning or the variants of q learning being used uh, in uh, with deep uh, deep architectures that's why we'll see dqn later we don't we are not going to look at deep sarsa later we're going to look at deep q learning 